Hi there. Yep, he looks pretty sharp to the girls of today. A century ago, this blue jacket kept all the girls pining. A few years before, glazed canvas hats and short coats were in vogue. This band served when sailors often made their own uniforms. And there was a time when American tires had no uniforms at all. But that never stopped them, in love or in war. Seventeen seventy six. There was fire in the streets. <laughs> the revolt against King George turned every colonial port into a battleground. Navy was born. and whatever clothes they happened to bring aboard. Only officers had uniforms. To the well-dressed enemy, Americans must have looked like pirates, for the British artists picture them this way. John Paul Jones, as seen by a British engraver. Jones in a British cartoon. Our own artists had quite a different view of the great naval hero. Washington in triumph. Victory. Now men could build for peace. But gangs of pirates blocked the merchants' routes of trade. of all officers had been regulated in detail, but the sailors still wore whatever they came aboard in or could buy out of slops. Engravings of the time show them in loose shirts and trousers, often cut from discarded sails. The crude scissors they had made barbering so difficult most men wore their hair long, usually in pigtails. Flat black hats or bandanas help keep it out of their eyes. Each ship's captain bought his crew's clothing in bulk in whatever port he could strike a good bargain. It was then retailed to the men, the price being taken out of their pay. This 
is the earliest United States Navy regulation touching on seamen's clothing. Not until 1818 did regulations begin to make official the customary sailor's garb. In winter, dark canvas trousers belled wide at the bottom so they could be rolled easily for deck work. A short blue jacket protected by a wide collar against stains that might come from long and seldom washed hair. Hat ribbons, tape, stars and the like were not regulation. Each sailor could decorate himself according to taste. In summer, whites were allowed, often made by the sailor himself. The black neckerchief was originally designed as a sweat cloth. By 1841, regulations were demanding that a sailor keep his hair short. His beard, assuming he was old enough to raise one, could not descend more than one inch below the tip of the ears. Then, as now, he went away to the Navy a boy and came back a man. War in Mexico and California in the late 1840s gave many a farm boy views of distant shores. These sketches were made by William H. Myers, a gunner aboard the U.S. Sloop of War, Dale. On shore, the army is surrounded. Sailors come to the rescue, manning artillery, rifles, and boarding spikes. in California. But south of the Rio Grande, the war still raged. and his shipmates helped to win California and Texas for the Union. One flotilla saw even stranger sights when they were sent to open up Japan. Its official artist shows how the Navy men of that day dressed when on show. Commodore Perry awaits an audience with the Shogunate. There were official receptions and banquets to which some enlisted men were invited. Presents were exchanged and the Japanese got their first lessons in American know-how. Dressed in off-duty garb, sailors went sightseeing. Some even took pictures with the bulky cameras of 1856 to show the folks back home where they had been. Ever since Civil War days, photographers have shown us how the Navy dressed. This picture was taken in 1861. Notice the different collar styles worn by the men. Those hard straw hats were not regulation either. Yet we know from these Matthew Brady photos that the Navy silhouette familiar to us today was well established as early as 1862. These photos were taken aboard the Monitor, first ironclad ship of the U.S. Navy. 
In the war's final stages, boys of 12 were doing man-sized jobs. They still left home as boys and came back men. It was a grim and gritty war. Yet, old salts are young. Whatever they wore, the ladies still loved them. Or so we are told in song and story. With peace, came a bit of officially sponsored finery. Notice the embroidery above the chevrons. White tape on collars and cuffs became uniform. These old salts of the 1880s dressed for Sunday illustrate another important change. The beribboned hats bearing the name of their ship. Whites were approved for summer wear and for Pacific stations. For ordinary duty though, particularly in winter, they still wore almost anything that was warm. The 1890s, little change in uniform design, but notice those faces. Mostly clean-shaven, and mostly clean. The popularity of barbers had greatly increased. The same for soap and water. At last, the American seaman appeared to be the kind of fellow every mother would be proud to have her daughter welcome home. differed little from those their fathers might have received for the war with Spain 20 years before. Though weapons were new, life in the Navy was very much the same. Nor was life in Uncle Sam's Navy so very different for the three and a half million Americans who enlisted for the duration of World War II. They were issued uniforms almost identical in basic design to those their fathers might have worn in World War I. These uniforms still had to be the kind you could pack in a sea bag, for quarters on most ships were too cramped to accommodate lockers or sea chests. And the Navy still wasn't the place where a man wore his dressing gown and pajamas. One big improvement, however, was the practice of issuing special gear to ships' companies for use on Arctic convoys and other cold weather runs. So they fought. And like their ancestors of the Revolution, when the guns were hot, each man wore whatever he could find that would protect him against the cold and wet.
Now, some thought the sailors deserved something better than a uniform whose design had been set fully a hundred years before. But should the American sailor dress like this? Or like this? The Secretary of the Navy appointed a board of experts to decide. After many months, they published these three basic designs and asked for comments from all hands, afloat and ashore. Oh, I don't like that color. Are they gonna make us wear that? I bet you want a hard buckster outfit. Who won't look like that? I think it looks sissified. Looks too much like the army. Hey, Roy, I bet you couldn't pack that in a sea bag. What's wrong with the old army guy? It just ain't Navy. Both regulars and reserves turned thumbs down on the new design. The plan was scrapped. The uniform board settled for such minor changes as adding side pockets to trousers and zippered flies. But even these breaks with Navy tradition were opposed by most old salts. Though 75 million American males switched to zippers, the sailors stood pat. So the Navy has once more made the 13-button front its official design. That is why the sailor of today is dressed remarkably like his grandfather and great-grandfather 100 years ago. Well? And why not? You talk about your modern casual clothes, open collar, shirt tail out. Oh, we've had that for years. And everybody else has been going around choking on high collars and neckties. And you talk about your clothes that pack well. Well, ours are designed to fit in a sea bag. They're easy to wash. Easy to keep in shape, and they fit neatly. We've had a model uniform for a long, long time, and we're proud of it. Well, uh, what do you think? I don't think I'd change a thing. Hey, you two. Yes, Mother? Dinner's ready. <laughs> <laughs> 